Welcome to Land Navigation for Search and Rescue. This video is part of a series designed to assist SAR volunteers in acquiring skills essential for safe, effective land navigation in a search and rescue environment. The videos for map reading, compass work, and GPS operation are designed to address Washington State's land navigation core competency requirements for ground searchers. Maps are essential tools in the planning, management, execution, and documentation of search and rescue operations. Two types of maps are commonly used in search and rescue operations, planimetric and topographic. Planimetric maps focus on such things as roads, streams, lakes, points of interest such as campgrounds, wilderness areas, and distinctive features such as mountains and trails. Road maps and city street maps are often planimetric maps. Planimetric maps can be used to measure distance, direction, and area. Maps used for search and rescue will normally show a coordinate grid of some type, which can be used to define locations. Coordinate systems are discussed in great detail in a separate presentation. Topographic maps use contour lines to reveal the shape of the ground, the topography. Contour lines connect points of equal elevation. The vertical distance between contour lines is the contour interval. For this map, it is 40 feet. When contour lines are close together, the ground is steep. When contour lines are farther apart, the terrain is not so steep. Using contour lines to read, visualize topography is covered in detail in a separate presentation. Planimetric maps can be used for showing travel routes or indicating the command post location. For planning containment, and hasty searches. Topographic maps provide terrain information which is very useful for defining search assignments for areas, for roads, and for trails. Also for identifying topographic features which are likely to attract or repel or trap lost persons. Maps are illustrations representing the Earth's surface, created to serve a chosen purpose. The cartographer selects features to be shown by the map and identifies them using a set of map symbols. Compare these two maps. The one on the left is older and focuses on roads. The map on the right has more information about trails. If you were looking for a lost hiker, which might be more useful? These two maps are of the same area. The map on the left shows mine or cave entrances, while the one on the right does not. If you were looking for a lost spelunker, cave explorer, which map would be more helpful? Maps are created by assembling a set of map symbols, each associated with a feature the cartographer wants to include in the map. For every map, there is a legend which defines symbols used in the map. This legend defines map symbols which are common to the great variety of maps used for search and rescue. This legend is specifically applicable 
to the USGS 7.5 minute series topographic maps, which cover the entire US, have been in production for many decades, and which arguably provide the foundation for all topographic maps used in search and rescue. One of my reviewers uh, reminded me that satellite images and aerial images are an important tool used in search and rescue operations and that I should at least mention satellite images as part of this video sequence. So here we go. I'm going to show you how to uh, get satellite images and topographic maps for free from the web and you can download these and put them on a thumb drive and have them for offline use when you're in a remote setting with your search and rescue operations. So here we go. We're going to go to the USGS national map. And I'm going to click on that. There we go. So this website created by the US Geological Survey, you can zoom in on an area of interest. And I'm going to zoom in on the Mount St. Helens area because that's where I've been doing my videos for this series. Let's see, there's Mount St. Helens. Getting a little bit closer. Oh, yeah, there we go. Mount St. Helens. So when you get into an area that you're interested in, um, you can double click on it and then you can view the maps that are available. And I want the newest one, so I'm going to view that PDF. And there it is. That's a topographic map. Um, and I want to download this map so I can use it. So I'm going to hit the download button. And I'm going to save it to my desktop. There's the download process. This is slower or faster, depending upon your download speeds. I'm going to show it in a folder so I can click on it and open it up. Okay, so here's the, it's a little, I want to change the formatting here a little bit. I'm going to move this around so you can see better what's going on. Let's see if I can widen this out. I want you to see it, what I'm doing when I'm clicking on the edges of this thing. Okay. Sorry for this little delay, but I think you'll see it makes a difference. Okay, so here's the map. This is the new USGS 7.5 minute series maps, but it's more than just a map. It's a interactive series of layers on the map. So let's look at the various layers. <clears throat> it says map frame here, so we're going to open that up. And you see the green, that's the woodland, so let's take that off because it just gets in the way. And also, I want to take off the hydrology, and I'm going to take off the topography or terrain so you don't see that. Now, what I really was after was the image. There it is. That's the satellite image. That's what I came to see, the satellite image. So I can zoom in, and I think you can see, hopefully you can see where this would be a pretty handy tool to help uh, manage your search. You can see the terrain, uh, vegetation cover, not necessarily terrain, but you can certainly see the vegetation, get a better idea of the cover of the ground. Uh, remembering that these maps are, these aerial images are three or four years old probably. You can actually see what the date is on the map. Uh, imagery 2015, so that's not too bad. So, okay, here's the satellite image that's available. Um, I can get rid of those uh, projections and grids so you can just see the satellite image. Uh, and over here you can see I've got the latitude and longitude and the U.S. national grid coordinates of my pointer, wherever I put it. So this is just to give you a quick introduction to satellite images and how to get them and how to get them for free off the web from the U.S. National Map, U.S. Geological Survey. There will be another video in this series which gives a much more detailed look at how to 
use satellite images in your search and rescue operations. So enjoy it.